Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rosie from Cambodian Nest. And here again, I am at the Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia with Mr. Ambassador Santo Damusumato, a newly appointed Indonesian ambassador to Cambodia. And he just presented his credential to King Norong Samuni yesterday. And he just arrived in the country last month. However, uh, he is not a stranger to the country. Uh, he came to Cambodia back in 2012 uh, for the ASEAN Summit when Cambodia was the chair. And 10 years later, he returned as an ambassador to Cambodia. So what do we have to learn from or uh, from Mr. Ambassador and also the plans that he wants to do like in order to boost our friendship? So Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for having me. Thank you. So my first question to you, Mr. Ambassador Santo, as an uh, Indonesian ambassador to Cambodia, how would you describe yourself and what aspired you to uh, pursue a career as an ambassador? I became a diplomat around 21 years ago. Um, I've always wanted to become a diplomat since I was young, since I was in elementary school mm -hmm. and then later on high school and the university as well. So uh, upon becoming a diplomat in Indonesia, I had to focus on particular issues. And the issues that I focused on was the Asia Pacific. So um, this particular part of the region is very much an area of interest to me. And I've always wanted to have um, the opportunity to visit as well as live in uh, this part of the world, um, East Asia as well as Southeast Asia. So um, I, I am very pleased to be here in Cambodia. Um, this is my second time around here in Cambodia. But I'm, this time around, it'll be a longer stay <laughs> in Cambodia. So I'm looking forward to um, doing a lot of things with uh, my colleagues here, um, both Cambodians as well as Indonesians, to further strengthen the cooperation between our, our two countries. And, and, and yeah, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be, to be here. Yeah, so this time we will be here longer and working with us more. So how, how would you, uh, like, one, the Cambodian people to know you as an ambassador to the country? <laughs> um, uh, there are many things uh, about myself. I am a very easy person. <laughs> <laughs> I am very talkative in that sense. Um, I will have to learn some uh, Cambodian language, of course, in order for me to communicate with people here. But it seems that um, I haven't had any difficulties communicating with, with Cambodians, mm -hmm. even with English or with whatever language that I'm using. So uh, myself, you know, I've, I've, I've been uh, posted in a number of countries previously. I was posted in China for some time. I also spent some time living in Canada as well as Australia. So in those places, I've always had uh, friends or uh, uh, colleagues who are from Cambodia. So Cambodia is not new for me, um, but definitely um, now that I'm staying here and living here, it would be very interesting in how, how I could pursue my continued interest of, of Cambodia and, and its people, yeah. Uh, Cam Cambodia and Indonesia has more than 60 years of friendships. We have a long history together. Yes. So how do you see our friendship? And uh, uh, I uh, is it at its peak? Or like what areas that you think we should work on together in order to enhance our cooperation? Yeah. Um, next year, actually, we will be celebrating the 65th anniversary of our diplomatic relations, so you're correct, it's more than 60 mm -hmm. years. But I think um, at the same time, um, we have also to note that the ties between the people in Cambodia and the people in Indonesia actually existed even further than that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it goes back until the ancient times of the various kingdoms that existed here um, in this part of the world as well as in the Indonesian part of the world, like for example, Majapahit and Sriwijaya in, in Indonesia and the kingdoms of Champa and Khmer here mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, I mean, the, the, the interactions between our two peoples have existed a long time ago. But of course, since the independence of both countries mm -hmm. and since we established our uh, bilateral diplomatic relations, uh, a lot of things have happened and a lot of things have also been able to be developed to ensure that the cooperation uh, is beneficial to the people of, of the two countries. Um, if you're asking me whether it, the cooperation right now is at its peak, I would have to say not yet. Why? Because that will give me the drive to want to move it further higher. 
So I think um, if we are at the peak, then there's a tendency for us to be um, be lazy about about wanting to to continue the development of cooperation. But if we're always looking up, I think there's a lot of room for us to explore in our cooperation. Um, in particular, I think for myself, there are three de uh, three areas that I would like to work on um, during my stay here in, 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 in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. The first, of course, is economic cooperation. Right now, Indonesia is the seventh largest uh, trading partner in ASEAN for, 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 for Cambodia. We'd like to be at least number five. So, you know, we're hoping that Indonesia and Cambodia can further strengthen our trade cooperation so that at least this year we can reach the one million mm -hmm. US dollar mark and probably in the years to come we can reach further higher numbers as well. Of course, I will, I will try my best to also encourage investments from Indonesia to come to Cambodia and explore the potential um, of um, continued economic growth here in Cambodia. We recognize that various um, international bodies have recognized that the potential for growth or the economic growth of Cambodia um, after the pandemic is quite good and therefore I think there's a lot of opportunities for Indonesian companies as well as state-owned mm -hmm. enterprise to invest and also work with the Cambodian um, um, economic movers here. Uh, that's the first one. The second one is, of course, to enhance the people-to-people -people or social interactions. Like I said, you know, we have a long history in cooperation, but I feel that maybe the younger generations need to be reminded of a lot of the things that we have achieved together in history. Um, uh, some of our forefathers, you know, were very close. For example, uh, the King Father Norodom Sihanouk and our um, our proclamator as well, um, President Sukarno, very close. But the interactions was uh, it was it was historical. So the younger generations need to be reminded that the fact that because of our long history together, that means this is a strong basis for cooperation towards the, the future. And of course, you know, maybe this can be developed through. Uh, more scholarships, mm -hmm. more interactions, more visits by tourists from Indonesia here or tourists from Cambodia to Indonesia. Uh, these are some of the things that I would like to push for development. The third one, of course, is with regards to um, a citizen service here in, Indonesia, in, in, in Cambodia. Right now, I think there are around 16,000 Indonesians living in Cambodia, but some people are saying that the numbers can be double. So if it's 30,000 or even more and so, that means uh, my embassy here have to provide a lot of service for the Indonesians living here. Um, but such services can only happen with cooperation from the Cambodian government as well as the Cambodian people. So uh, we will be relying very much on cooperation with the government as well as people on how to facilitate um, the protection as well as services for Indonesians living here and working here in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. So people to people tie, also trade cooperation, and also the uh, the service yeah. that you can give to uh, Indonesian people yes. here. Yes. And uh, I am interested that you mentioned about e education. Yes. So I I wonder like uh, are there many Cambodian students pursuing the education in Indonesia? Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are there are Cambodians um, uh, in Indonesia presently studying there. A lot of them, of course, are studying at universities and uh, doing degrees there as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are doing bachelor degrees in Indonesia under various types of scholarships mm -hmm. provided by the Indonesian government. But I recognize that the numbers uh, at the moment is too small. Um, so we're hoping that the numbers will continue to grow. And of course, myself, I am committed to working with universities in Indonesia mm -hmm. to um, increase the number of scholarships that can be provided for Cambodians um, whenever they want to learn to, to learn in Indonesia. And of course, um, alumni, there are actually a lot of um, Cambodians who, who in the past uh, did their studies in Indonesia. Some of them have become high officials as we, in, 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 in the Cambodian government. They've become senior ministers mm -hmm. as well, or state secretary, sorry, not senior ministers, but secretary, um, state secretary of states, you know. So very high level officials in various ministries um, in, in Cambodia. So we're looking forward for that to happen and, and for, for that to happen we need to have more Cambodians studying in, in Indonesia. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you mentioned a lot but I did not uh, see that you mentioned the agricultural cooperation with yes. the country. And just in August, yeah. uh, Indonesia agreed to buy a uh, 125,000 tons of rice yes. 
and with the renewal of the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding, uh, we did have one like in 2012, but it mm -hmm. fell because uh, the price negotiation was unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. And now we have reached the final point, like mm -hmm. where we cooperate in mm -hmm. uh, the right straight. Yeah. So, uh, what is your take on these issues, and 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 uh, what do you think that you could do more in yeah. order to push forward the agricultural cooperation yes. between Indonesia and Cambodia? Yes, I think there's a lot of potential for agricultural cooperation mm -hmm. between Indonesia and Cambodia. Um, the MOU that you mentioned that was renewed was an MOU in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And it, it focuses not only on agricultural products trade, but also focuses on other areas as well. For example, like capacity building, mm -hmm. uh, research development. So these are some of the things that we need to further strengthen our cooperation. It's true that um, Indonesia has expressed a tremendous interest in purchasing rice from Cambodia. It's, the rice here is fantastic. You know? <laughs> I think it's the best rice I've had in my life it has been here in Cambodia. So I think uh, there's a genuine interest in Indonesia to increase imports of rice from, from Cambodia, mm -hmm. be it specialty rice or the, the regular, regular rice in that sense, you know. But I think um, um, we're still working on um, how we can achieve the, the numbers that we've mentioned. Um, but uh, there's positive, there's optimism that we will be able to get to that position. At the same time, I think uh, the cooperation in, in rice needs to go further than mm -hmm. just trade. It needs to go into areas, for example, like investment or capacity building. And this is some of the areas that we want to work on. I also would like to push for greater interactions or greater uh, cooperation in education, in agriculture. Uh, Indonesia has the Indone um, Institute Pertanian Bogor, which is the Bogor Agriculture Institute, which is one of the best institutes in the region for, for the studies in agriculture. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get more uh, Cambodians uh, studying there. I know a few of them have studied there and they've become high officials here as well. So looking forward for, for, for better cooperation in the agricultural sector between our two countries. Yeah, for sure. All right. For more, co co uh, for more cooperation on the ag agricultural sector. Yes. yes. So uh, besides all of this sector, yeah. I see that uh, human tra trafficking is yeah. also one of the concerning issues that yes. Cambodia has been work working on. Yeah. And I believe that Indonesia also treat these issues as a concerning yes. issues also. Yes. And I see that um, the two countries has have uh, committed like to join hand in order yes, to combat human tra trafficking in, in the form of job job scams. Yeah. Uh, Cambodia has helped uh, Indonesian pe people and also Indonesia has helped Cambodian citizens. Yeah. So with these issues, uh, what do you think that in Indonesia like, could work with Cambodia in order to uh, combat yeah. this problem? Um, uh, uh, online scam yeah. and also human trafficking is a, they, both of them are transnational crimes. Mm -hmm. And because the nature of, of them being as transnational crimes, therefore I think it is impossible for one country to solve the issue on their own. I think it's very important for there to be cooperation, not only bilaterally, say for example between Indonesia and, and Cambodia, but also a cooperation that is more regional based because the issue is not, you know, it's not um, specific to one country or two, but actually is more a concern for the region as a whole. Uh, therefore, I think um, Indonesia's approach has been very, very, very clear in this, is that um, we are not only pursuing cooperation uh, bilaterally, mm -hmm. but we're also f pursuing cooperation at the regional level. And this is why Indonesia was very keen on pushing the agenda of, of addressing human trafficking during our chairmanship of, of ASEAN this year. And so, of course, that is being supported very, very fully, very comprehensively by the Cambodian government. And we're looking forward to how we can implement our commitments at the regional level, as well as at the bilateral, to address this issue of human trafficking. At the same time, of course, we are appreciative of the Cambodian mm -hmm. government for its effort in providing uh, safety and security to a lot of Indonesians who have been um, the victims of trafficking. For example, just um, a week ago, uh, Indonesia, my embassy was successful in, um, in bringing back 28 um, Indonesians who have been involved in, who have been victims of human trafficking. And this could only have been done with the close support and close cooperation of the relevant agencies here in in, in the Cambodian government. So we're looking forward to more cooperation as such, but at the same time, not only how to address the issue, but how to prevent mm -hmm. it as well. 
And I think uh, the element of prevention is also something that we want to work with the Cambodian government as well. Okay, yeah. so it's a transnational issue. Yes. We have to work all together. Yes, to yes, we're, we're in it together, I think. Um, and that's the only way that we can address this comprehensively. Comprehensive. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, you mentioned about the ASEAN uh, Tiam Championship. Yeah. And just last year, Cambodia was the host. And this year, Indonesia uh, was the host. Yeah. So as a ASEAN member states, so how uh, Indonesia like, will look with Cambodia in order to maintain the centrality of the bloc as well as the regional security? Yeah. Mm. I think um, just the fact that we are always in the Troika, you know, the mm. previous chairman and the current chairman and the future chairman, which will be uh, Laos, you know, the fact that we're always in that situation means that the, the, the two, uh, Indonesia and Cambodia, uh, need to work together to push for a lot of agendas and to ensure that ASEAN continues to be at the helm of, of, of cooperation in the region mm -hmm. and also an, um, making sure that ASEAN is at the driving seat of, of various issues in the region and also the centrality, maintain the centrality of ASEAN. Of course, you know, I would like to congratulate uh, the Cambodian government and the Cambodian people for the successful um, chairmanship of, of, of ASEAN um, by, by Cambodia in 2022. And that success was what allowed us to have preparations for this year's chairmanship of, of ASEAN by Indonesia. So, you know, a lot of a lot of things uh, were transferred from the success that was carried out by the by the Cambodian government to what we are trying to do in 2023. So I think um, um, I think both of our countries are very keen mm -hmm. to ensure that ASEAN plays a positive role in security. ASEAN plays a positive role in economic cooperation as well and people-to-people -people interactions, not only among the 10 ASEAN countries plus Timor-Leste, but also the region as a whole. I think it's very important for us to ensure that there is stability, that there is balance among the relationships between, among the major powers in the region. And I think Cambodia and Indonesia are very key. We, are, we have good relations with all the major powers in the region. And it is very important for us to ensure that the relationship between the major powers are always stable and always progressing towards peace and prosperity. And I think uh, this is where our two countries can, can work together, and not only on, on the issue mm -hmm. of recovery, economic recovery after the pandemic, but also to maintain a stable and peaceful environment in the region. All right. In the region, the will, com will be committed to maintaining the peace, the prosperity yes. in the bloc. Yes. And also the tie between the two countries. Yes, but too. All right. So back to uh, people, to people tie. Yes. To the culture thing. Yeah. Uh, Cam Cambodia and Indonesia have different cultures and we are trying to learn from each other. So to you, as an ambassador, how can you foster the uh, mutual understanding between the different culture yeah. of Cambodia and Indonesia? as well as uh, create the trust and the respect yeah. between uh, the, uh, the Cambodian people and yeah. Indonesian people. You mentioned that there are d a lot of differences between the cultures, but I believe <laughs> that there are so many similarities between the cultures of Indonesia and Cambodia. The fact that both peoples eat rice <laughs> is already a start of it. Now, if you eat the same thing, of course you will have the same taste buds. And I think the Indonesian taste buds are very much similar to the Cambodian taste buds because all of the Indonesians who live in Cambodia say they like Cambodian food. And all of the Cambodians who I know live in, in Indonesia mm -hmm. love Indonesian food. So the fact that we share that commonality is also an indication that there's a lot of similarities between the, our, our cultures. Of course, there are some differences, uh, but these differences, I think, should be the highlight of our interactions. I think um, we draw from a lot of the same sources. Um, um, Buddhism is also quite strong in Indonesia. Um, there is also a large Muslim community here in, in, in Cambodia. So the interactions are quite uh, are positive in that sense. And I think um, there's a lot of room for us to work on how we can learn from one another. Um, I think one of the things that we can do is to highlight the fact that there are similarities between us and also highlight the way we appreciate the differences between, between one of us. The differences could be language, 
So I, I believe that a lot of Cambodians find it easy to learn Bahasa Indonesia. <laughs> um, but I don't know if, if the, the Khmer language is as easy as Bahasa Indonesia, but I will try my best to learn the language here. Um, at the moment, I only know how to say Susu Day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so hopefully, you know, in three years, I'll be able to say more than that. But I think uh, this is where it needs to be pushed. Um, tourism, education, and people-to-people -people interactions, mm -hmm. particularly among the, the young people. So I would like to see more more programs in this particular field. More tourists from Indonesia coming here and tourists from Cambodia going to Indonesia. More people studying in Indonesia as well as in Cambodia. And also greater interactions among the young people because the young people are the ones that shape the societies in the future. If the Cambodians don't know about Indonesia, then the future of Cambodia will be very distant from Indonesia. If the Indonesians don't know about Cambodia, and of course, the future of Indonesia will be very distant from Cambodia. I think it's very important for us. I think our youth right now look too much to other places. Like for example, Indonesian youth look to Western music. Mm -hmm. Cambodian youth look into Western music as well. Okay. So they don't meet. So I think there is a lot of opportunities for us to develop meeting points for the young generations to, to, to meet and to exchange and to create new things together and I think you know as part of the ASEAN community part of the ASEAN family there are a lot of opportunities for this to happen right. yeah as the uh, mem member of the a ASEAN we also like, share a lot of in interest like the use and yes. uh, the, the culture and yes. the fact that we eat rice, we <laughs> <both> eat rice. <laughs> so Mr. Uh, Ambassador uh, the, the last question to you before I end this interview yes uh, you were here 10 years ago yeah and now you are here again, like yeah. 10 years apart. Yes. So have you noticed any significant of course. changes occur <laughs> in the country? Yes. I, I, I don't know about the country, but I can tell you about Phnom Penh. Because mm -hmm. when I came here in 2012, I, I did visit uh, Simrip as well. To, of course, if you're in Cambodia, you have to visit the Angkor Wat, yeah. right? So in 2012, on my first visit to, to Cambodia, I had to make a, a trip to, to Simrip by bus. and. It was very pleasant. I, I enjoyed it very much. Um, uh, I see a lot of changes here in Phnom Penh, uh, particularly with regards to the high-rise buildings uh, that previously didn't exist. Now they exist everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of the economy is bustling a bit more here in, in Cambodia. You see more people out in the streets, um, meaning that the economy is is happening. You know, in, in Cambodia. Um, but at the same time, I like to tell you that some things remain the same. And, and the same is the attitude of the people. The people continue to be very nice, the people continue to be very warm, and the Cambodians continue to always smile. <laughs> <laughs> so while there are some changes happening in the city, I also note very much that there are a lot of things that are remain the same. And those that have remained the same, I think you know, should, be, should be the same, which is the way the people are. But of course, the progress you know, is something that we, we need to embrace together. Um, like I told you, you know, when I was first, the first time I was here, I stayed at the Sofitel um, and, and, then, and then next to it, it was empty land. Yeah. Now next to it, there's a big shopping mall. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, these are some of the changes that, 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 that happened uh, over the, the last 11 years or so. Mm -hmm. And I know that probably these changes are not only happening here in Phnom Penh, but also all around Cambodia itself. So I'm looking forward to discovering that as I um, <coughs> as I as I as I as I enjoy living in, in mm -hmm. Cambodia for the next few years. Yeah. So there are changes in terms of infrastructure, yes. but in terms of people, they remain the same. Yes. Like kindness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> right. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador Santos, thank you very much for sharing with us your perspective and also uh, what you uh, enjoy about Cambodia as well as your plan during your mandate as an ambassador here. And we are looking forward uh, to more fruitful cooperation with Indonesia. And thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Rosie, and thank you very much to all of you uh, who are either watching this or reading uh, the, the media. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. Much.